What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. Personal finance is a very interesting niche on YouTube. It could go into a lot of different ways. And today I want to talk to you about minimalism, but I also want to talk to you about my approach to it and why it's pretty uncommon compared to how most people do minimalism. So you have a spectrum when it comes to personal finances. You have the wealth side of things, but you also have like the penny pinching, saving, not needing to have that much because in life, like you need to focus on your happiness and having too many things can be a deterrence to you. And actually, the more things you have, the more things have you. And, and that's the true saying, like think about it. A lot of times when you own a lot of things, like a lot, a lot of things, your identity starts to get pulled in with that stuff. And that's why certain famous people like rappers, actors, singers, stuff like that, they can end up with accumulating a lot of things and they can really lose their way in terms of who they are. And they can obviously have a negative impact on their happiness. And so the line between financially responsible and enjoying life has been blurred for quite some time. And you have the advice against you know, being extra and having extremely materialistic wants and things like that and having diamond chains or having overly extravagant things that cost way more than they should. And you should really focus on having like less things and just enjoy life, be able to enjoy the simpler things in life and also save some money because a lot of the things that are flashier are complete liabilities and it doesn't make sense to own them because they have absolutely no value. And so that's like the general umbrella of advice that can take place in personal finances. And I just wanna give my take on minimalism because it's, it's a lot different. Like, I don't necessarily come from the cloth of people who don't need much of anything like this. You, you see these minim minimalism videos. I can barely say that word, y'all. I ain't gonna lie to you. But you see these minimalism videos and a lot of them look like these empty apartments. It's a very nice aesthetic look. Like it really looks clean and it looks peaceful. It looks like it's not cluttered. And a lot of minimalism videos focus on like decluttering and things like that. But I'm coming to minimalism from a personal finance standpoint. And of course, minimalism does come with saving money. It goes hand in hand. And that's why I wanted to make this video because while externally, I'm not an extreme minimalist. Like I, I definitely have like an apartment full of furniture. I have nice things. I have things on the walls, like these lights, for example, and stuff like that. Like on my desk, I have like books and other decorations and things like that. So I don't consider that stuff minimalist. I think like super clean surface things, those types of things are minimalist and having less. But the way I approach minimalism, when it, especially when it comes to personal finances is, I'm only focused on putting the most of my money towards things that actually matter in life. And the theme of this year, and this is gonna catch on, I've never heard anybody but myself say this, but wealth is what you don't see. You don't see my bank account. You don't see my stock portfolio. You don't see my Roth IRA. You don't see my 401ks. You don't see all of my assets. That's where wealth comes from. And what I focus on is I'm going to save my money, but I'm not going to save it just to save or just to be like, oh, well, I put an extra few hundred dollars in my savings account. There's nothing wrong with that. And I definitely used to do that, especially when I didn't have my savings built up to where I needed it to be. However, my priorities have changed as I've aged because I'm like, well, wait a minute. If I'm focused on increasing my income and becoming more wealthy over time and I'm making sure my skill set becomes more and more valuable year over year and I'm focused on multiple streams of income, I'm even more minimalist with my money than I was when I just had one stream of income. Why? Because now money coming in from all these different areas, like from my book, like from YouTube, clients on my website, stuff like that. I'm making sure that I'm not spending a crazy amount of money on things that I don't need that don't add more value because I'm like, to me what's important is making sure that my savings is building. To me what's important is that my stock portfolio is growing and that I'm getting into the right investments at the right time. So it means, yeah, like, I don't have a ton of things, but on the exterior, I'm not what you would consider to be a minimalist. But financially speaking, I am because 
what's important to me is my future and right now. And if I focus on those two things, that means every bit of money that I get, sure, it's important to have fun. It's important to go on dates and things like that. It's important to spend time with your significant other or your friends. It's important to have that leisure time, but it's also important to put a cap on how much you spend on those types of things. And it's more important to look at, okay, what is the future to me? To me, that's what, that's what my uncommon approach to minimalism is. It's like, I'm not going to spend that much money on things that are not important. The things I just listed are very important and that still has a cap on it. But the things that are not important are to a minimum. Sometimes you got to get some new clothes or some new shoes. To me, that's not important. I understand that sometimes it needs to happen. You grow out of certain things. The way I've been working out lately, I'm about to bust out of half of my clothes, so I got to buy new clothes. You know what I'm saying? But that's not something that naturally needs to happen all the time. What do you see at the mall all the time? You see a bunch of people getting bags and bags and bags of clothes. And I'm not judging nobody. I'm just saying... To me, that's not where my priorities are. I have plenty of clothes. I don't need to be out there every weekend getting a bunch of new clothes. And the clothes might look good. They might be fresh or whatever. The shoes might be clean. But the value that that stuff has on my life pales in comparison to putting multiple thousands of dollars into the stock market at a young age and doing so consistently year over year over year. That's where millionaires are created. Making sure that my savings is on point, that makes sure that I am financially secure. That's where peace is created. That's where confidence is created. You know how you're walking on eggshells when your savings account ain't where it should be? It's like, oh man, you just feel this uncomfortable feeling. It's almost like a feeling of impending doom. Like You don't know what's going to happen, but you know that something has the potential to happen. And if it does happen, your finances are going to be wiped. That's a terrible feeling to have. But once you have some cushion in that savings account, even just a few thousand dollars, you feel like, okay, I'm good. You'll feel a lot better going to sleep with 10,000 in your savings account than you would with like 100. Making sure your emergency fund is constantly building on top of your savings account. And you know what? If you got a savings account and an emergency fund and your emergency fund has an emergency fund, you're going to feel real good. But having more external things, it'll feel comfortable. But... In the world of personal finance, your comfort zone can work against you and it can be your biggest enemy because we can fall in love with the feeling of comfort and then we become our own worst enemy because instead of what we should be doing, we choose comfort. Instead of getting up early and going to the gym, for example, oh man, this bed feels too good and it's cold outside and it's raining, I ain't going to the gym. It's just like that. We can pick comfort Spending a lot of time watching TV, watching Netflix, spending a lot of time trying to pick out what we're going to wear today. That stuff is nonsense to me. And I'm not being judgmental. I'm just telling you my point of view when it comes to minimalism and saving money because I just think it's interesting. Why buy all those clothes only to be indecisive about what you're going to wear today? And that actually takes a lot of time. And there is a such thing as decision fatigue. Look it up. That stuff can actually hurt you throughout your day as you make your decisions. That's why having less can mean more. It can mean more mental clarity. It could be more peaceful. And you can have more in your pockets. We have to focus on the right things. Because once you get yourself together, now you can help other people. Once you have your savings account, your emergency fund, and maybe even your emergency fund number two, or however you want to do it, cool. Once you have your investments good, and you're able to consistently contribute a certain amount to your investments, now you can be like, okay, well, now we're going to look at my future son or my future daughter's college fund. Or if they don't want to go into college, that's fine. I'll look at what account I can start investing in for them, and I'll start looking up what types of accounts there are for children, and then I can set up a plan of how much money is going to go towards these things every single month. And then by the time they hit 18, they're going to be set. Y'all, I don't have no kids. But having these types of thoughts are going to make sure that you put forth the effort and the actions to make these things happen. Sometimes you might see me second guess buying something expensive that I know I don't need. But it's not because I'm like, oh, well, I'm broke or oh, because my savings ain't where I want it to be. Nah, it's, it's not because of that. It's because 
I know that I could be missing out on investing that $600 in something that can buy me far more opportunities and freedom than $600 worth of leisure. That's why I set a limit for myself. And I keep that stuff minimal because it lacks in importance compared to everything else that I want to do in my life. And I also have a business, so I'm also reinvesting into my business. So, so to keep improving upon my business and keep revenue coming in, I'm going to definitely second guess the money that goes towards things that I don't need compared to my business. Does everybody have a business? No, I understand that. But having the minimalist mindset when it comes to anything, even if you're the everyday person, even if you're, even if you're someone who wakes up every day, works extremely hard at work, comes back home, cooks, cleans, rests up, goes back to work the next day, having that minimalist mindset is going to help you throughout your day. First of all, your place is probably going to be a lot cleaner because you'll have less things, less things to maintain. Your finances will feel a lot better because you won't have that many financial obligations. You'll have little overhead. I've never agreed with like getting a car loan, for example. Like I always thought that if you could buy a car in cash, buy it in cash. I know not everybody's in a position to do that, but I'm just telling you how I'm thinking about it. That's more minimalist to buy a car in cash because it's definitely cheaper than buying a depreciating asset that literally has an interest rate causing the price to go up and it's minimalist on your stress and it's just a good feeling but you focus on having very little overhead and then whenever you want to buy yourself something nice by all means buy something nice but i think if you're like all right i'm going to buy myself something nice this month this is going to be the cap for the nice things you know you might be making good money and be like, okay, you know what? For myself this month, I'm not spending no more than $400. And for some of you, that may be too high. That may be too low. But I'm just naming a random number here. $400. You do have to have balance in life somewhat. But I do think some things in life should be off balance on purpose. For example, your work to play ratio, you're always going to work more than you play. That's why you get five days of work in most cases and two days off. That's your work to play ratio. Even if you, in some places are doing four days a week now, you still get three days off. That's your work to play ratio. You're still working more than you're playing. You get what I mean? And so your work to play ratio when it comes to money should be a similar way, in my humble opinion, because if I'm working this hard and I'm using my time to add value to this company and they're paying me in exchange for my work, I need to be smart with the money that they're giving me. I need to be putting it in an investment or in something that I know can make me more money in the long run and use a portion of it to enjoy and have fun with. That's, that's what I'm talking about. But it is the complete opposite for a lot of folks. And that's why I do recommend minimalism, frugal living, and things like that to other people because they really need to be more mindful of how they spend because I know you worked hard and I know you feel like you deserve it. But I think a lot of us go overboard. I used to go overboard. And I had to reflect on my actions and be like, man, and I really felt bad about it. And I beat myself up about it. And from there, I changed my ways financially. And I might have went overboard when it came to being frugal. But then, you know, I balanced everything out. So it doesn't make sense to get out of work. And now when you get paid, you're splurging, you're splurging. And then when you actually need something, oh man, I don't get paid till, God, two Fridays from now. If you prioritize the needs and your future, that's your work portion of your money. And then after your needs and everything is taken care of, then you focus on the play aspect of it, which is, you know, dinners out, going out, vacation, things like that. Then you'll find your life is a lot better. But as you can see, that's off balance. It's like more money still goes towards your needs, but you still get both of them. People say balance like, oh, well, you need balance in your life. So you mean to tell me I'm supposed to work the exact amount of days that I'm supposed to be off because most work structures aren't made like that. So you're telling me that I should spend the same exact amount of money on my bills that I'm supposed to spend on fun? I think not. I think half the world would go broke right now if they did that. 
So you're telling me I shouldn't put any money towards my retirement because that's taken away from my fun. Because some people genuinely think like that. And I had to actually coach quite a few people and like, look, if you don't do this, this can have this sort of impact in your life. I can't tell you what to do because I'm not a fiduciary advisor, but not investing in your 401k can hurt you. But you can't see the 401k. People can't look at you and be like, oh yeah, he has $200,000 in his 401k. They can't tell. They can't rob you of your 401k. But what that 401k is gonna bring you in the future is a life of peace, a life of relaxation, a life where you can spend more time with your family. But if you're so focused on having fun right now, and like on this channel, I swear, people probably think I demonize having fun. I don't, I love having fun. I have fun every single week and I schedule it for myself and I give myself at least one day per week where I just have the full day to do whatever the heck I want. But between there, I'm grinding. I'm making things happen for myself, for my future, for my future family. I'm making stuff happen. I'm out here. I'm adding value. And I keep the things that I own to a minimum. And I want to accumulate as much as I can to continue to put more money into the things that are driving vehicles that are building my wealth. But wealth is what you don't see. Just like peace is something that you don't necessarily see. You could walk past a bunch of people. How many people depressed do you know of that are smiling right in your face? So you can't tell the difference between somebody who's depressed and someone who's at peace in life. Not always, sometimes you can, but not always. And that's my point. You can't see wealth, you can't see peace, you can't see happiness all the time. Because people can fool you into thinking that they're actually happy. I'm not saying minimalism and saving money is the answer to all the world's problems, but I am saying it is an extreme value add, but I just have a different way of thinking about it. I don't just choose to be minimalist with my money because, oh, well, I'm just a tightwad. I just, you know what I mean? It's not like that. It's not like, oh, I just want to have a completely empty apartment. I'm not knocking those guys, but that's not who I am. That's not what I do. I'm just simply prioritizing my money to have the biggest, brightest future ever. And also make sure that my life right now is very good as well. So it's not just me thinking about the future, it's me thinking about right now and the future and just being a responsible adult with my money. So anyway, that's all I had to say in this video, but I just wanted to really share that with you because I haven't really seen this approach shared too much when it comes to money. There's very different ends of the spectrum when it comes to personal finances, and I just wanted to share my thoughts when it comes to that stuff. Plus, I think minimalism and saving money and stuff like that, I think it's a very underserved part of YouTube right now, and I think sharing my insight could add value to quite a bit of people. And I also wanna bring home the point that saving money just to save money is not gonna make you wealthy, and at the end of the day, I just want to be wealthy, but remember, wealth is what you don't see. And even with having wealth of your wildest dreams, you can still be a minimalist. So I just wanted to share that with you. But anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth, so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.